Hello everyone and I hope you're doing well. Today we are challenging the water and wind event. Now I've built a deck that seems to be crushing the event. Now if you've played it at all you know the ice barrier is pretty much everywhere. Uh, it seems to be the top deck to beat but this deck can compete with that. It is a water deck and it's on the budget side. Uh, there are a couple of changes you can make but I'll go through that when we get to the deck. So without further ado let me show you the list. So we're playing a bit of a fish deck in this event, more specifically Pacifist Phantasm City. Now the aim of this deck is to pretty much stun your opponent and uh, keep summoning fishes with your Pacifist. Now Pacifist is the core of the deck, it acts as Umi so it activates a lot of your traps and uh, whenever you normal or special summon a normal monster you can add a Phantasm Spiral card to your hand which includes all the traps and uh, if your opponent activates a card or effect you can special summon a token, that's if you control no tokens, which activates the other effect. So it's pretty much a controlly game style and uh, really helps against pretty much everything in this event since it's quite low power. So let's just go through the card by card. We have three Megala Smasher X, awesome name. Uh, basically he's just a big water monster, he's 2000. You can play some other ones as well like Space Mumbo. Um, but I, I found that three was enough. We have one of the only big dragon boys or worms, Phantasm Spiral Dragon. You can special summon him off a lot of the equip cards. I was tempted to run more than one, but honestly, he's just a brick and uh, you're not often OTKing with this deck anyway. Uh, we have Pot Duality. We're not special summoning on our turn very often. Three Heat Wave. If you're in the TCG, you know that this is used in Tenpai Dragon. Basically, start your main phase one. Neither player can normal special summon effect monsters to your next draw phase. It looks pretty much every deck out of a turn. Then we have some pots. We have Pot of Desires, Pot of Extravagance, Pot of Prosperity. Let's just get into basically our pacifist. We need ways to get into that. Uh, we have Fish Sonar, which lets you search a level 7 or lower monster. That mentions Umi. Or if it's a water normal monster, which includes any of our normal monsters here. And uh, if you control pacifists, you can special summon the another water monster from your deck. So you can search Megalith Smasher and then special Megalith Smasher. We have two Time Tearing Morganite. This is mainly to draw two. You're not using the summon effect very often, um, but it's really good in a slow deck like this. We have some of the equips. So we have uh, Phantasm Spiral Crash. So this gives it piercing. And uh, if you inflict damage, special summon the Phantasm Spiral Dragon from your hand deck or graveyard, equip it, and then change an attack position to defense. Uh, this one gains 500 attack for a normal monster. Uh, when it inflicts damage, inflict a thousand after special summoning the Spiral Dragon. We have Spiral Wave, which is probably my favorite one. Uh, so first time it would be destroyed by battle, it is not destroyed. At the end of the battle, special summon Dragon. Uh, equip it with the card, and if your opponent has any cards in the hand, your opponent discards one card. So it's a good way to get kind of card advantage. We have three pacifists, the core of the deck. Uh, you can't run less than that. We have Phantasm Spiral Battle. Uh, basically a pop one. Uh, if you have Umi on the field and one normal monster on the field, you can activate it from hand. And you can banish it from graveyard. Equip the normal monster you target with all the Phantasm equip spells you control to it, which isn't that useful to be honest. Uh, we have Phantasm Spiral Power, pretty much an imperm, but it minuses a thousand attack and defense as well. And if you control the pacifist, you can activate that from hand. Uh, we have Metaverse. This is one you can cut. Uh, you don't need it, but it's really useful in kind of getting a pacifist out, especially on your opponent's turn where it kind of matters. So it, it's a good include if you have it, but you don't need to craft it. You could probably just put in another spiral battle. Three evenly matched. Um, I mean, every deck has a tough time going second in this event. I'm pretty sure one I considered playing is is justy break when your opponent declares an attack on your normal monster destroy all monsters on the field except attack position normal monsters so if you don't have evenly matched first of all craft that um but this is another funny one you can include and i think in one of the replays i was testing it out uh and now we have a bunch of going first stuff we have three solemn judgment three solemn or two solemn warning uh one solemn strike and three sea stealth attack sea stealth attack is disgusting people just don't read this card so it's a continuous trap uh you can once per turn banish a water monster you control until the end phase and uh, face up spell and trap cards you control can't be destroyed by card effects. 
not really what we're using it for. But the second effect at the start of the damage therapy for water monster whose original level of fire, 5 or higher battles an opponent's monster destroy that monster. Of course, the pacifist has to be face up for this. But essentially, if your opponent attacks any of your tokens or your Phantasm Spiral Dragon, they're just going to die. And uh, it's not once per turn, so they keep crashing. The extra deck doesn't matter too much, so I won't linger on it. Um, the only one that might come up is Araya, the Water Charmer, because you can special summon a water monster from your opponent's graveyard, but oftentimes you have enough beatdown with the Megalith Smasher and the Spiral Dragons. Uh, we have Stealth Kraken, which is another kind of important one if you manage to go into it. Um, I mean, if, if you know Kraken, you know Kraken, but um, it just turns everything into water and you can pop a water monster quick effect each turn, which is quite handy. Uh, the rest, we've got a bunch of level 4s. We've got Mirror Geist, Gaga Giga Gigio, uh, Abyss Dweller, Full Armored Black Ray Lancer, Silent Honor Arc. I had to put him in because he's a royal. Uh, Ragnar Zero, a Hope Woven Dragon Spider Shark. Brilliant name. Pen Transaction, and uh, some of the Kraken spawns for Kraken. We also have Miss Star Boy because he's cool. Uh, but essentially, you can fill that with any level fours that you have. You can pretty much just. Yeah, you're, you're rarely, rarely going into these. Um, if I have a look at the event, I have grinded it out a lot, and I don't think I've summoned an extra deck monster once, and when I did, it was a mistake. So you don't really need the extra deck. Just put it out there. So now that we've had a look at the deck, let's jump into a few games I saved and uh, show you how the deck works. Going into this replay, we're going against the big bad of this event, which is Ice Barrier. Now, Ice Barrier seems to have a hidden effect in the deck that makes you open two medallions. So you can go for the medallion to go for Speaker. He's going to summon Revealer and then go for another medallion. Uh, honestly, every replay with Ice Barrier seems to have two medallions, and I don't know why. He's going to use the Revealer effect pitching the Ice Barrier, that's like saying the title of the movie, to go into Gorgeous, and then use Hexa to pitch the Mirror Mage. He's going to go to Winds over the Ice Barrier and then use Ice Barrier Effect to send a General Wayne. Lil Wayne, there he is. He reveals the Wayne. He's going to use Speaker to Special Summon and then he's going to go into Coral Dragon. Kind of cool, but now he gets sent to the graveyard for Lancia, which is mega cool. He's going to use Coral Dragon to draw a card and then Speaker to Special Summon an Ice Barrier token to his field. He's going to use the Winds of the Ice Barrier to tribute the token and the other Ice Barrier he had to go into Mirror Mage and Zujin. Zujin Effect is going to Special Summon General Rido. So essentially right now he has a Monster Negate and uh, also kind of a Monster Negate, optional Monster Negate. And uh, honestly, I don't know what this guy does. He's just here for the ride. But we've got a really good opening hand, to be honest. We're going to start with the Heat Wave to prevent any follow-up and special summons. We're going to go for Time Terry Morganite so we can really grind that game out. Activate Pacifist. Go for the Pot of Desire to draw into a couple more cards. Pretty good, but they're not going to help us here. We'll normal summon the Megalith Smasher. And then since we normal summoned, we can grab a card. We grab Spiral Power. We're going to equip Spiral Grip and kill the Mirror Mage using Spiral Grip's effect. Unfortunately, he's going to chain the Mirror Mage uh, to add an Ice Barrier card. He's going to add Frozen Domain. But we get to special summon our boy, our big boy that gets equipped. We're going to kill the optional Monster Negate. And uh, we've done quite a lot of damage. We can set the uh, Solemn Warning and Sea Stealth Attack. Now, Sea Stealth Attack is very helpful. The reason we don't set Spiral Power is because we can activate it from hand. Now, he's going to use the Winds of the Ice Barrier to banish it. Add back Hexa to hand. Since he activated an effect, we get a token. And since we summoned... We can use a pacifist to add a card. For some reason, he goes for Ghost Mourner on the Spiral Token. Not sure why, to be honest. I guess it's the only one that can technically use it on. Uh, he's going to swing for an attack, but we're going to go see Stealth Attack. And he realizes he doesn't have an out for that. Two medallions is not enough to save you, my good sir. Luckily for us, the whole event isn't filled with just Ice Barrier. There's also Liralask OTK, which is what we're going against here. We've got a very good opening hand here. We're going to start with the Pot of Extravagance. Unfortunately, the Evenly Match is dead, but otherwise this is almost a perfect hand. We're going to go for Pacifist here. Normal summon the Megalith Smasher using the Pacifist to grab the in archetype Imperm. We're going to use Fish Sona to add Megalith Smasher because we control Umi. We can summon another Megalith Smasher. And we're going to set the Solemn Strike, Solemn Warning, and the Imperm. Now onto our opponent's turn, he's going to special summon Slower Swallow. He's going to use Wear Aft now to add another Simorg Bird of Beginning. 
Now we're going to use the passive effect since he activated a card to special summon our token and add the in archetype pop. He's going to use the Lyrilla Sapphire Swallow to special summon some Morgue and itself. He's then going to normal summon some Morgue. And we're going to use the Imperm on the some Morgue here, mainly because we're scared and uh, we're pretty sure he's about to go into a big summon that we can negate. Oh, would you look at that? That is four cards into one card. And uh, this Solemn Strike is going to get so much value that it literally kills our opponent. Yeah. <laughs> Pretty much. If you're playing Lyra Lask OCK in this event, you should probably scoop against the uh, Pacifist. We're going against one of the other best water decks of this format, which is Goatee. Now, forgive me, I'm going to butcher every single Goatee name in the archetype because I have no idea how to say them. We have a decent opening hand. We have Pacifist, which kind of brings this whole hand together. We set the evenly sea cell attack at Metaverse. He's going to go for Snopios, banishing P6 and White Sardine. He's going to use P6 to banish another White Sardine and then use Scopios to target the Pacifist. So when it leaves the field, it gets banished. Now, I'll chain Pacifist to summon a token and we might as well get the T stealth attack online. Now let's let the chain resolve. We get our token. He's going to use Snopios, which does pretty much nothing at the moment because it can't be destroyed. P6 will summon itself. He's going to use a P6 effect after we use the Pacifist effect to search for a Pacifist card or a card that mentions Umi. He adds the Paces, banishes the Paces, and uh, luckily they can all special summon themselves in the standby phase. He normal summons Lifeless Leafish, sending Sheaf to the graveyard, using Sheaf effect to Give it some attack, but mainly just to banish it. He's going to use Abyss Shark, since he controls only waters to special summon it, and add Fish Harpoon as a hand. He's going to go into Stealth Kraken here, and now this is where I should have used Solemn, but we can dodge the Kraken effect of Destruction by using the Sea Stealth attack to remove the token and protect all our spells and traps. Now we get to summon another Spiral token, because he did activate a monster effect. Now he doesn't attack, because he has actually red Sea Stealth, which is quite rare. In the standby phase, he's going to bring back all his fishes. He's going to bring back Shift and Paces. We're going to switch our token to attack and he quick synchros using the paces and the p6 going into Aska. Now I don't want to read this card so I'm just going to slum judgment here because you know we're a control deck we don't need to see what that does and it has more attack than our token. He's going to use the Kraken effect and uh, again we'll go for the sea stealth attack removing the token. He's then going to chain ship to quick synchro once again. Let's see what he goes into. He goes into Golem. Goglium. Uh, sea Stealth Attack will resolve, and so will Stealth Kraken. We'll go for Pacifist again, and he realizes that we've got a grip on the game. Pretty much, I don't think Goatee runs a way to get out of the Sea Stealth Attack, so I'm pretty sure that's why he conceded there. And uh, I just noticed he's got a, uh, a Fire Border, and that's not the right event, buddy. So we had about five replays going against Ice Barriers, but I thought I'd show off all the different decks that seem to be doing pretty good this event. We're going against flew this game and we've got a decent hand off side from the two evenly matched we're going to start with the pacifist which seems to be a pattern here we're going to go for the megalith smasher normal summon and add the imper so we've got an imperm and a pop and the pacifist and a big fish he's going to start with the one of pot of prosperity to reveal six and the triple tactics talent extravagance the map that's where we knew we were going against flu Stree, Book of Moon, and Eglin. He's going to go for the map, which is a very, very powerful card, especially against this deck. We're going to go for the Pacifist Effect to summon the token, and then add the Imperm to our hand. He's going to use the Harpy's Feather Dust hat. You know what? I'm going to pop it. It's royal, and I'm jealous, so I'm going to have to kill it. So that's gone, but unfortunately we have no protection, no sea stealth attack, so we can't protect our spells and traps, which is a shame. He's going to go for the map, and then go for Jack in the Hand, revealing Stree, Token, and Gusto Eagle. Uh, we're going to add these three to our hand and we don't get to see what he adds. We're gonna go He's going to go for the map, revealing Rabina, banishing the token, using the Rabina normal summon and then chaining it to token to add that back to hand. Now after Master's All animations take a year to resolve, uh, we can see that he added Stree. He's going to normal summon the Eglen here, going into Mpen. He's going to tribute those two for Mpen. He's going to use the Mpen effect to add a spell and then Rabina and Eglen to add them straight back to hand. What a good resource loop. This deck is like fun to watch, but not to play against. He adds the unexplored winds. He's gonna normal summon the Stree here, banishing my Imperm from the grave for some reason. He's normal summoning the token using the winds. He's gonna summon Gusto Eagle. He's gonna go into battle, use the M pen to go into our Megalo Smasher, halving its attack. But luckily, all the birds are so small that they can't attack over my token. Fortunately, we're gonna do the job for him. We're just gonna go straight to battle phase, attack into the M pen, make him think we've given up. But no, we do have an evenly matched sitting back here. He sat on now just an M pen, and we're just going to set the tree that he gave us and the imperm. 
Now we're at a simplified game state, which this deck loves. It's just going to attack into the Shree and that gets banished. So now there's one card in hand and an M pen. We need to see something good. And boy, did we. We got Fish Sona. We're going to add the Megala Smasher to hand. And uh, we have an equip to basically just summon our big do big doid and uh we can use the imperm on the m pen before going into battle and then swing into it for some reason he uses this effect banishing crossed out designated but he probably knows that that's not going to be very helpful here we summon the big doid and uh, swing in the face and we pretty much have this game he needs to see something incredibly good off the top and it looks like he doesn't so yeah this wins against flu if you see exactly evenly matched <laughs> Thank you so much for watching. Let me know down in the comments what you used for this water and wind event. As you saw in this video, there's a lot of viable decks that you can use and uh, you've got to get those gems somehow. Plus, I kind of live for these Master Duel events. They're what make Master Duel much more fun than any other simulator. Anyway, that being said, if you made it this far in the video, please do feel free to hit subscribe. New Yu-Gi-Oh! videos each week. And as always, happy dueling.